Hey, it's me, Scotty, and this is my custom-built arcade machine. Inspiration for this project came from playing an arcade machine that was set up at the Kennedy Center. The game was Super Mario Bros, and it was set up for when the National Symphony Orchestra played game soundtracks. It got me thinking about uh, what's out there in terms of DIY. I remember when I first had the idea, I could not sleep, so I got out of bed and I wrote it all down. The goal was to build a full-sized stand-up cabinet, unlike a more consolidated bar top arcade. I wanted it to have a built-in screen and a set of speakers, buttons and joysticks for two players, and some kind of light-up marquee. I spent a lot of time drawing the cabinet in CAD software, and by the time I came home for spring break, I was ready to start cutting wood. Using the 3D model, I generated these plans that I referred to throughout the build. This specific sheet is a coordinate of all the vertices in the side panels, with the origin at the bottom corner. I looked at dozens of cabinets to pull inspiration from, and settled on this design that resembles the joust machine. Using the coordinate system, I was able to connect the dots and create two mostly identical boards despite using arbitrary measurements. I layered one board on top of the other, and went through the edges with a flush cut bit from the router, which made them match perfectly. Another use of the router was cutting slots on the sides of the boards. This allowed me to fasten T-molding on all the edges, which protects the wood and gives it a smooth finish. By the end of spring break, I had finished cutting out the pieces, and found out that I would be staying home. This allowed me to continue the project by assembling the parts. For the painting process, my dad bought me a paint sprayer. I chose gloss black for the interior, and gloss dark blue for the exterior. Several repetitions of primer and sanding got the wood to feel really smooth so that when the paint came on, it was nice and shiny. The finishing touch was the LED marquee. If you haven't already, check out my build video for it. Here you can see me installing a light switch that turns it on and off. Very convenient. And here it is in its completed state. I'll give you a tour. 
So here we have the soundboard. We have two speaker grills that are 3D printed and a control panel for volume control. Very convenient. The LCD monitor is mounted just right to give it a seamless fit, but if I had more time and resources I would have gone with a CRT display. However, games on the MAME emulator have a old school filter that makes them look like they're on a CRT anyway. It does the trick. Down here is a swinging door that's hanging on inset hinges for storage space. You can access the PC from the outside and all it needs is one button press to boot up the system and start the arcade software. Speaking of software, I'm using BigBox to organize the games and present them in a really slick user interface. Any arcade game will launch from here via the main emulator. I also have access to Steam games. Roforce works especially well in an arcade. The control panel lights up. In addition to player one and player two controls, there is a infinite coin button, home button, and a pause button. One thing that I wanted since the beginning was an authentic trackball. I found this one on eBay, and it hooks up to a standard PS2 style connector, and it functions like a regular mouse. I use it to play games like Missile Command and Centipede, and it makes those games way more fun. The whole thing is sitting on a set of rolling casters, which makes it easy to transport. The whole thing is two feet wide and nearly six feet tall, and it just barely fits between the game shelf and the fish tank. the buttons I got on Amazon, the stereo I tore out of an old pair of PC speakers, and the monitor I got off of Craigslist for only $30. It helps to be thrifty with these things, keeps costs down. The machine is powered by a Windows 10 PC, which I bought at a flea market in June of 2019. I outfitted it with a solid state drive, Wi-Fi, and an Nvidia RTX graphics card. Plans for the future, right. So I'm going to eventually add a handle to the door, and I can always add more games, but you might be thinking, Scotty, why do you need a high-end graphics card for these arcade games? And the answer is, I don't. Well, the plan is to run an HDMI cable up over the ceiling to my TV, and that will allow me to play PC games on the couch. Still figuring out how I'm going to set up a mouse and keyboard, but it'll be worth it once it's set up. While we're here, I'll show you a couple of things that I would have done differently if I were to start this project over again. In other words, this is the part of the video where I point out a bunch of things that still bother me that you may not have noticed, but you're going to notice them now, but it's for the sake of knowledge, so here we go. Once I had the whole thing assembled, I did a lot of testing with all the parts together, including the control panel. If I were to do this all over again, I would have put the buttons in after painting the control panel. Another thing to remember is to make sure the monitor has enough room to be slotted into the opening. I got lucky and there happened to be enough clearance in the ceiling for it to be inserted without having to alter anything. Another thing, when I put the nails in, I forgot to take into account how they would show up, and I ended up with a few visual nails. Oh well. In the face of what I got right, these mishaps seem pretty minor. I'm really happy with how it turned out, and I'm just as happy with how much fun it was to build. As a result, I have learned a lot of woodworking and electronic skills along the way. From conception to completion, the project lasted over four months, and by the end of it, everything I had envisioned from the planning phase came to fruition. Getting to play these games with my family has been delightful for me because it's a chance for them to discover and sometimes recall memories of playing games back in the arcade heyday. You gonna keep coming for me? Just bomb him. Ooh. Oh. Go! <laughs> 
If you want to build your own arcade machine, there are tons of great resources available that I can reference in the description. I'll include my own plans there as well. While I may have to wait until next summer to show this off to my friends, seeing the project through to completion was its own reward. That's all for today's episode. Bye-bye. Thank you.